Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another weekly weapons brief brought to you by Battlefield Vegas. Today we're going to talk about the M1 Grand. The M1 weighs about 10 pounds. It's got an overall length of 43 and a half inches with a 24 inch barrel. It fires about 45 rounds per minute of the 30 out 6 in an eight round end block clip. Has an effective range of about 500 yards and it's a gas operated closed rotating bolt. John C. Guerin started at Springfield in 1901 and it took about 16 years before he had a final product. A lot of that had to do with the US military bouncing back and forth, deciding what caliber they wanted to use between the 30 and the 279. That was until Army Chief of Staff General Douglas MacArthur realized how much 30 that they had stocked up and they put it into the discussion. So the 30 out 6 was the caliber used in the M1 Garand, and by 1941, the U.S. Army was fully equipped. So there's been more than 30 military, more than 30 countries have used this in their military, of some version or another. We were able to find some, some interesting facts about it, but really can't back them up. Maybe you guys can help us out in the comments below. But it um, looks like Greece and Norway still use the M1 Grand in some of their drill and ceremony teams. And it's possible, this is, this is the part we're not sure about, that the, the Brazilians created a 7.62 by 5.1 NATO and actually changed it, designed it to take an FN foul mag. I don't know, let us know in the bottom, guys. But uh, we're going to go ahead and send this to Sean. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Hey guys, Livio Maze here. Are you sick of getting M1 thumb? Doesn't it seem like no matter what you're doing or where you're at, that pesky M1 thumb seems to rear its ugly, calming, loving head. Ready to take a break and you want a snack? Oh, there it is again. So you just want to hear those hip new tunes? Not today. Even in the bathroom. Oh man, that's gotta hurt. All right, guys, so make sure that you don't get M1 thumb. You're going to worry about one thing, just one thing. Keep your thumb on the back, that sweet spot on the back of the clip, and make sure that it never slams your thumb all the way. God, oh, son of a yeah. mother. Yeah. Here's Sean with the breakdown. All right, guys, today we're going to go over the uh, breakdown of the M1 Garand. It's a pretty simple breakdown process, uh, nothing too crazy. We're just going to go into the basic field stripping of it. Just like any weapon, the first thing you're going to do is we're going to clear it to make sure it's empty. Pull back on the charging handle on the right hand side. Visually and uh, physically inspect the chamber to make sure that it's empty. In order to get this uh, op rod to go back forward, as you can see it's stuck to the rear, uh, it's actually caught right now on the magazine follower. So what you want to do is, is pull slight pressure to the rear and then push down on the magazine follower and slowly release the bolt forward and then get your thumb out of the way before you close it the rest of the way. That's how you end up getting the grand thumb that everybody keeps talking about. All right, so the next part is uh, on the trigger guard back here is actually there's a hook on it and that's the part that holds the gun together. What you're going to do is you're going to pull backwards on the trigger guard and slight pressure up, lifting it out of the receiver just like that. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to lift up the stock from the back end and set it off to the side. Your next step is uh, going to be relieving the tension off of this op rod. It's uh, connected right here through the uh, follower arm. You're going to pull backwards on it, it's actually got quite a bit of tension to it, so you want to get both hands on it so it doesn't slip out. Pull backwards on it, and kind of push down with your other hand to try to get the uh, follower to drop free. Just like that. This is a brand new uh, recoil spring in here, so it's, it's got some tension to it. You're going to set that off to the side. Next thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to need a punch to finish this operation uh, just for the basic field strip. You, soldiers in the field and stuff could have used a bullet to push this pin through. It's not under any tension or anything. You're just going to take your uh, punch on the right hand side. There's a small hole in the receiver and you're going to push the uh, pin out from uh, right to left. Pushing that out, the rest of your assembly is going to come apart. Right here you have your uh, op rod catch that's going to come out and go to the side. Then you have your uh, bullet guide and uh, op rod arm. And then, and then your magazine follower will come up and out. Flipping the receiver over now is how you get the op rod itself and the bolt out. You pull backwards, there's a small slot cut in the uh, 
charging handle guide, you're, you're going to pull it back to that slot and then slight, just a little bit of pressure, lift up on the charging handle. You're going to pull it, rotate this just like counterclockwise just a little bit and pull it back and out. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull back on the bolt, tilting it up at a 45 degree angle and then kind of rotate it to the side. On the inside of this receiver, there's a uh, small bridge and it's, uh, it goes completely across the receiver. Uh, that's, that bridge right there is kind of what you have to put this bolt at a 45 degree angle to get up and over. And there's a small slot cut in that bridge uh, that is basically a firing pin block. Uh, it go, this firing pin is in an L shape and the small slot is to stop this firing pin from falling should this bolt not be all the way in battery, it'll be rotated just slightly. Um, it's, uh, it's, it actually acts as like a drop safety or if uh, in full auto, if, uh, like in the M14, the full auto M14 has the same thing uh, for bolt bounce purposes. It, it's, a, it's a really good feature. Setting it off to the side, you're pretty much broken down all the way th that you need to go. Every once in a while you want to clean out your gas plug. It's in the front up here by the barrel. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, turn it to the left until it unscrews. Uh, that gets built up with a lot of carbon. You, uh, you want to clean that off uh, after, after heavy firing, but it's not necessary after, you know, just a few clips that you're put through it. Other than that, I mean, that's the uh, disassembly of this weapon. There's a few points that I wanted to cover as far as uh, lubing this gun. A lot of gun, uh, back in World War II, there was a big argument between most of the guns on whether to use grease or to use oil. Um, and they both had their advantages and disadvantages. Mainly oil um, was really messy and a lot of things uh, would stick to it and grease would wash away, believe it or not, in like heavy rainfall and stuff. So when these guns were actually issued, what they did is, is they would issue you oil and grease with this gun and certain parts on the inside of the receiver needed to be oiled and some parts needed to be greased. Uh, from what I've read, everything, uh, everything points to a general rule of thumb of if it slides, you grease it, and if, you, if it rolls, you oil it. All right, guys, so real quick, we're going to go over how we shoot this here at Battlefield Vegas. You want to make sure you bring it up tight in the pocket of your shoulder, just like that. Bring your finger high and up off the trigger. Keep it there until you're aiming, ready to shoot. Now, the charging handle is reciprocating, so the handle itself moves back and forth as well as the whole slide does. So you want to make sure that your non-firing hand is far enough forward so that none of this can bite you. Your rear sight, it's a, uh, it's a post and hole sight, so look through that small hole in the rear, line up the post on the front and the small hole, and, and fire away. Thanks, man. Ready to go shoot this thing? Yeah, sure. All right, man. Thank you.